Uh, Hector Carcamo is a research scientist specializing in insect pest management at Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada in Lethbridge, Alberta. Uh, currently, Hector and his colleagues are researching ligus bugs, flea beetles, cabbage, seed pod weevil, pea leaf weevil, and alfalfa weevil. He has also studied beneficial insects such as carabid beetles. Here's Hector. Thank you, Jay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, thanks to the organizers for the privilege to be part of this uh, panel. And thank you to everybody who's joining from around the prairies to listen to this information. So I've got eight minutes, so I'm just going to uh, reset my timer here so I don't go over time. So what I'm going to do is uh, give you a very quick overview of the key pests that I work on in terms of uh, kind of the bottom line messages as far as uh, what, what's, what's key information. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to tell you in general about plants and insects. And just to remind you that uh, insects, just like the ligus bugs and their interaction with plants, like the canola plant, for example, they have been co-evolving and interacting for millions and millions of years. So they have had this kind of love-hate relationship that is always uh, changing. And uh, insect, insect and plants have a very, very complicated relationship. So it's not always uh, a negative relationship. Uh, and I'm, I'm talking specifically about what we perceive as pests. For example, an insect like a ligus bug can actually be a beneficial insect to have early on during the, the early flower stages of canola if you only have a few of them. And this has been documented for not just ligus, but also for other insects. It has been shown, for example, grasshoppers in sunflowers, uh, cabbage seafood weevil in, uh, in some canola cultivars in Sweden, for example. If you only have a few insects sometimes, you actually get a little bit of a boost in yield. So just to remind you that they have a, a complicated relationship. So first I want to talk about flea beetles. This is probably the number one insect pest in the prairies, uh, regardless of, of how you look at it in, in terms of the amount of insecticide that is used uh, in, in terms of uh, seed treatments or even foliar sprays that are applied and geographic distribution. So there are three species that are, that are found in crops. The ones that we, mostly worry about are the uh, crucifer flea beetles. Here is shiny black. These are the bluish ones here, so we don't see very often. Those are the hop flea beetles. And the striped flea beetle, which is a serious, serious issue <clears throat> because it's not controlled as easily with you know, insecticides as, as the other species. So what should we remember about flea beetles? Well, first of all, they are a key pest during the seedling stage. So before the crop has two to four true leaves, during the cotyledon stage, that's when you want to be on the field uh, scouting and you want to check for the uh, damage on the cotyledon. The um, economic injury level, the economic threshold is 25% of the foliage damage. So that's what you're gonna be looking for. And remember that the damage is going to be more severe around the edges of the fields. And if you have a very warm day, something like a 25 degree days in uh, late May, early June, you may actually have a massive influx, which can be very devastating for the field. So keep an eye on um, bee beetles. Uh, here I've shown a photo of a pollen beetle, which is one that we don't have yet. Uh, it's a, another pest that is in Eastern Canada and potentially could be moving to the, our region. Hopefully that's not the case. We keep an eye on it. And so far we have not found it. Next, I want to talk about cave seafood weevil. Uh, this is another pest that attacks canola. At the, uh, this one comes to the crop at the bolting stage, even at the, at the late bolt stage, you can find them. Uh, but they start feeding on the crop and you will see largest numbers at the early flower. And early flower means approximately one week after you see the very first flower in your canola field. That is the time when you should be scouting quite intensively. And again, you will see more abundance along the edges and they, they eventually they will move into the rest of the field. So if you're on the ball, you could actually manage this crop by just spraying the borders of the, of the field and that will uh, save you some money and some time. You could also try a trap crop. If you, if you have varieties that are uh, a little bit different in the, in the flowering time, you could plant the border with an earlier flowering variety 
and then the rest of the field, you can either plant it a bit late or plant the later variety. And I think now that we have shot the resistant cultivars, we actually have a chance to do that and do it successfully. Okay, the last pest I want to talk about is one of my favorite uh, pet insect pests. These are the Ligus bows. You can see there, are, I have a, a slide here showing the, the tiny first instar baby. They're only about uh, less than one millimeter. But once they start developing these wing pads, they actually become damaging. And once they are at the, at the third uh, nymphal instar, around two millimeters, you can actually start to see the uh, wing pads developing. And you can start to see these black spots developing also. That's when their mouth parts are long enough and they can penetrate the canola pods and, and the damage. So the time to uh, scout for Ligus bugs is generally is the uh, early pod stage. It usually happens when the crop has completed 90% of its flowering. That means that when you look at the crop, you're gonna still see a few yellow flowers, but it's gonna be mostly green. So that is the time when Ligus bugs are most uh, dangerous to the canola crop. Uh, some people ask the question, should I actually spray Ligus at early flower if I see enough of them? Hey, last year, we had a really major Ligus outbreak and we actually learned some important lessons. One of them is that, yes, in the rare events when you have more than three Ligus per sweep at the early flower stage, there is the potential for them to cause damage because they feed on the flowers and the buds. Generally, that is not a problem. So if you have less than that number, don't worry about them. If you have very high numbers, then you may have to spray, but then you are into a major uh, challenging period because also the uh, pollinators are flying and lots of natural enemies are flying at that time. So the best thing to do is to spray only at the early pod stage. Also because spraying at early flower does not guarantee that you do not have to spray again at the early pod stage. So this last year, people had to spray two times because the light was not very so bad. So key message there, Remember, the threshold now is three ligos per sweep, and the key vulnerable stage is the early pod. Okay, those are my messages about best insects. Now I want to just take the last uh, one minute and 17 seconds I have to talk about beneficial insects. And I want to make two important points. Uh, you plant more than canola in the field. You plant wheat, you plant peas, and you plant other crops. And whatever you do on one crop, could have repercussions on the crop the next year or on adjacent crops. And uh, to illustrate that point, I want to talk about some of these uh, wasps here. Uh, for example, this one here is called Diolcogaster. It's a specialist on diamond back moth. And it happens to be very active during the time when cave seed weevils are also active. So when you're spraying for cave seed weevils, if you don't have, I forgot to tell you the economic thresholds for those. So the economic threshold for weevils is 25 to 40 weevils per 10 sweeps. So around three to four, you can round it up. So if you are below those thresholds or just around those thresholds, don't spray because you may be killing these uh, parasitoids. And, and it's not just this parasitoid, you could also be affecting uh, this other guy here, this one, Tetrastichus julis, uh, Alejandro Costamagna at the University of Manitoba and myself, had a graduate student who completed a landscape study. And his study suggested that if you have more canola in the landscape, then you actually have higher levels of parasitism on the cereal leaf beetle nearby in, in wheat fields. So whatever you do in that field of canola, where you are actually attracting a lot of uh, beneficial insects and pollinators because of the flowers, if you spray there, the insecticides are not just going to kill the pest, they're also going to uh, wipe out the beneficial insects. And that may have repercussions for insect pests like wisdom sulfi, for example, it's another example. There is a little orange wasp by the name of Bracon cephi, and that is also active at the time when canola is in flower, and it's going to come out of the, uh, of the stubble. Hopefully you, you left very high stubble for it over winter in the, in the wheat from this past year. It will come out when canola could be there, and if you're spraying, you could be taking that out also. Plus, there is the karate beetles, of course, let's not forget them, and the spiders that, uh, that you heard about. So I guess the message is uh, follow the economic thresholds, even if they're nominal thresholds, and do not reduce them just because canola prices have doubled, because the interaction of the insect and the plants is an interaction that is not dependent on economics. It's a biological interaction. It has been co-evolving for 
millions of years. And if we, uh, if we do things right, we can actually help this natural enemy. This, uh, I like to think of it as a, as a kind of a free service provided by this uh, army of three natural enemies at our disposals. And with that, I will stop. I think I went a little bit over time. <laughs>